What's up, everybody? What is good with you? It's your boy, Faiska, bringing that lightning, bringing that boat. I got my two homies, actually my three homies today. I got the usual, Tyler's Wellness from Talented Academy, and your boy, Ill Will, Professor, and my brother, Fat Boy. He's not fat, by the way, guys. I know I said that in a previous podcast about him being fat. He's not fat. I just call him Fat Boy because that's the nickname that I gave him when he was a kid. He still had these fat-ass cheeks. And he still had these fat-ass cheeks. I don't understand. Like, why are your cheeks so damn fat? And he comes and says some weird shit to me. And I just bounce it off because my brother and I have a unique relationship. This is my best friend, man. But anyways, guys, um, special note for today. Um, we are not drinking any tea. And I know it's like, whoa, this is Fill Your Cup podcast. It's the whole ritual. Like, yo, what is he doing? The reason why, guys, because we are participating in Ramadan. And so we do not adhere to an Islamic faith, however, but we just doing it for the experience. And we want to experience the culture. We want to understand the traditional aspects of it. Because I think that's what's important. You 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 immerse yourself in culture and experience. And that's how you become a unique and just more knowledgeable human being. And so we decided to go ahead and give this a shot. And uh, we are loving it so far. So shout out to the people who practice uh, the Islamic faith, and we're with you guys. We stand with you guys. Um, but with that, guys, since we're not drinking any tea, we're going to just be get right into it. We're still going to be filling your cup, and I hope your cup is filled with something good. All right, no bullshit. None of that bullshit. All right. My brother's about to say something. I'll tell him to shut the hell up. But all right. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. So, um, like I said, my brother was on a podcast, uh, like, what is it, like one or two earlier. And so he was talking about, you know, just what he does and whatnot. But I want him to talk to you guys about his experience as a as a as an amateur boxer pursuing a pro career. And, you know, talk to him about, bro, um, your experience, bro, what you did uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Talk to him about that. Well, um, I was actually participating in the uh, national tournament and the USA tournament. It was in Shreveport, Louisiana. And, um, yeah, I mean, that was my first time even being down south. I mean, I, I pretty much live in the damn bubble, unfortunately, sometimes. I just live in just, I mean, the only people I, the only places I've been was really, like, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, and Ohio, just like neighboring states. I mean, but besides that, that was my first time even being down south. But yeah, anyways, besides that, uh, yeah, I participated in the in that tournament. I had three bouts. I mean, the total was six bouts. I know, like they like, damn, bro, you got out kind of early. Well, shit. I mean, I thought like the last fight, it was a really close fight. Unfortunately, I didn't get the nod from the judges, but it's all good. It was definitely a, a learning experience. That was my first national tournament. But anyways, uh, it was definitely a, of a very fun a, a experience besides just making weight every day. I got to make weight, dude. I, I used to be like, I I used to just be going crazy sometimes, dude. As soon as I would fight, dude, I, like, kid you not, I would literally go up like 10 pounds. So I really have to throw in the song suit as soon as I get done fighting just to make weight. And that's like a struggle. Real quick, I want to ask you about the whole uh, weight cutting experience and whatnot. How is that, man? And do you feel drained when you go ahead and participate in your fights? No, I I really don't. I actually would literally get like a pee like, like after every weigh in. So what I would do is, luckily too, let me also add to that is... They would have the weigh-ins like at 5 a.m. So, and the fights won't be till 5 p.m. And for me, since I was at 152, um, they would let the you know let the lower weight classes go a little bit early. So therefore, I won't fight till like sometimes 6:30, hmm. maybe even 7:30. So I have like 14 hours to like rehydrate. So then after that, I'll be fe- feeling pretty good. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, how much, okay, so for the people out there that don't understand weight classes or whatnot, um, you fight at 152, right? Yeah, yeah. So in amateurs, 152 translates to 147 in pro. It just like the weight classes are slightly different from amateurs to pro. 
but 152, that's considered welterweight. And that was why he had to correct on the air that I am not fat. What I am not a damn fat fuck. I literally have abs. Uh, yeah, man. And I am not like an Andy Ruiz. No disrespect to Andy Ruiz. Because, I mean, because he pretty much is a hell of a fighter. But still, I'm not like that. <laughs> okay, so yeah, he's not like Andy Ruiz or whatnot. But shout out to him, man, because he's a phenomenal fighter. But anyways, yeah, so you fight at the 152 uh, weight division in the amateur. And you talk about rehydration. Take us through the process of rehydration um, for people that don't know. Yeah, well, with, with that would be for me to rehydrate, I would always like the, like the first thing that I would drink is my pee. Like I would drink the entire thing, get all my electrolytes in, and after that, I was just, you know, keep, and then I'll probably take like a couple big gulps of water and then just sip on that throughout the throughout um the until my fight of course and i mean make sure that i actually feel good and everything and then after that then i'll probably just eat a little bit just carb up too and then i might you know just rest a little bit since i got up you know really early in the morning just to weigh in and then i will eat some later on right before the fight like probably like two or three hours before my fight and usually what I would eat is pasta because pasta, you know, I mean, I would just really just carbo, just pack it all on. And I would also get like a, a Snickers right before my fight. I, I, would, I would literally eat the Snickers like an hour, like an hour, hour and a half before my fight. I would always do that just so I can get that uh, sugar rush. Then, yeah, that's after that. It's just a matter of just waiting and then and then it's just showtime. So yeah, uh, for our listeners on the air, uh, or for our listeners, uh, definitely, as you guys can, you know, see and not see necessarily, but hear that it's a process uh, through uh, fighting and even bodybuilding, all that stuff where you have to cut weight and whatnot. But um, the rehydration process, you said it wasn't so tough. I I definitely could relate to the Snicker experience, uh, which I'll talk about in a separate podcast. But uh, fighting, man, tell people what what's it like to fight? Cause I never actually did a boxing fight i did tournaments martial arts tournaments and spar but for me personally i never did an actual boxing match you know that's totally different you don't have those different variables you actually just throwing hands and so take us through that experience of what it's like link that to you know your first fight into your last fight you know well i'm not gonna bore you guys with all the details well like okay my first fight did this and that well my but i can definitely tell you like from my first fight it was, I mean, it, like, still is. I mean, which, nothing has changed, but it's not as bad. I used to be, like, nervous as hell. I remember, I used to be, like, I mean, and I pretty much, like, still feel this way. I'd be, like, going through my head. I'd be, like, boxing. Like, why the hell am I doing this shit? I'd be, like, why would anyone want to actually do this shit? It's, like, it's, like. I'd be like, why am I even putting myself, like, why am I even, like, trying to make weight? Like, why the hell, like, I could be, like, working, like, a job, you know what I mean? Just, just eating whatever I, like, want. But I'd just be like, why the hell am I doing this? It's, it's like, it, it, then I got, I got, like, people across, like, I'm literally going inside a ring. And people, I mean, granted, this, this is actually COVID time. So there's not really too many people that can actually, you know, spectate and, you know, watch the fight. But I've been there with, like, full crowds, and I'm, like, people are literally cheering so they can, like, watch me, like, get fucking killed in here. And people people are, like, cheering, and people are drinking just, like, yeah, yeah. I'm just, like, why the hell am I doing just entertaining these people? But then once I'm actually in there, I'm, like, like oh, man. Now I, it actually just reminds me, like, why I actually do just because I just fucking just love it. It just, like... I just like love hearing like the crowd cheers and and and, and like also like the when the when you like land like that little big shot then and and then the crowd be like ooh then you like oh yeah like, hell yeah hell yeah I'm about to just keep on keep on fucking him up keep on keep on doing it. keep on keep on hitting and then like if a guy hits you with a big shot. And they had that same reaction, like, ooh, you like this, no, like, hell no, I'm about to try to go get that damn, 
get that damn lake back. You be like, oh hell no. So it's definitely a, uh, definitely like a fun egg experience. But now for my last fight, that was like a, you know, I'm not gonna touch it on the last fight. I'm because I'm still a little pissed off from that. But I'm gonna go to the one before that because that was a little bit more dramatic. Well. Now, my second to my last fight when I was over in Louisiana, well, I fought against this one guy from Texas. Well, I didn't actually know this, but anyways, I'll I'll just I'll just actually tell you tell you like afterwards when I get done telling him like how the fight turned out. Well, anyways, I get in the ring, I fight this guy. This guy, I mean, though, but before I even tell you when I got in the ring, this guy's over listening to like. You know, like that damn trap music. Like he was fucking like aggressive, <laughs> aggressive as hell. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if it was King Von or somebody. He was talking, about, talking about like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking kill this mother. Like he was over listening to some real aggressive shit. I'm just like, okay, okay, man, he gonna be one of those, one of those, one of those kind of guys. So he, but anyways, we go into the ring. They do a little intros and okay, the. Uh, bell rings now anyways i'm really just moving around trying to just fill them out fill them out man i literally shoot like a right hand to the body because this guy is like really just like chasing me down trying just really trying to just land that the big shot this guy this guy literally takes a little small step with an uppercut and drops me i'm like oh shit i just kind of felt this like my damn like head is kind of ringing a little bit i was like okay Okay, then I like literally got it up, and and then the ref was counting like one, two. I'm just like I'm good, I'm good. I'm I'm trying to make sure that the ref has no reason to actually stop this fight. This guy over here, but like, let's go, let's go, let's fucking go. He literally like you know yelling out, cussing, it, you know talking, you know told and. I didn't even hear his part, but literally my coach told me that he was like, yeah, yeah, I told you guys nobody can, like, fuck with me or something like that. So I'm just like, okay, this guy's going to try to run at me as soon as the ref uh, counts. And that's what he did. He tried to land, like, a big shot, just make sure I just had my damn hands up until I, like, fully cleared my head. Then once I actually cleared my ass, okay. For guys who don't know this, but... It's a risk, but it's actually, you know, it's actually very uh, effective. A lot of guys, when guys that, that when you're fighting like a big puncher, they would try to just move around, try to use their angles, which that's very effective as well. But one thing that I like to do, shout out to Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder, is back him up. When you actually back the big puncher up, you can actually take away their uh, power. And, um... Just because I just like to use this example. I'd rather get hit by a car going backwards than the car going forward. So once I actually started backing him up, his power wasn't even there no more. I was like, oh shit, okay, okay. Then and then I just pressured him, broke him down, just used volume. Then eventually he started to tire out. Then eventually he had absolutely no power. I just kept on just throwing punches punches and bunches just kept it going then he just and literally this guy's literally grabbing on holding on <sighs> he just really just gasping for air and then literally and then a couple rounds later i mean because in amateur boss we win three rounds so by the third round i'm a little gas too but just not as tired as this guy i'm gonna just throwing just throwing just throwing and then the bell ring then we go, I go congratulate him and congratulate his coach. He comes to my coach, you know, that's just what we do in amateur boxing. Then then it's time to announce the decision, and I was the winner unanimously. And that was, like, a really proud moment of mine just because I was, like, I literally came up from the damn ground, and he literally knocked me down in, the, in like, the first minute of the first round. I came back, bounced back. And still, and and still dug deep, and still beat him, and that was like a really proud moment of mine. Just because, it's like man, 
you know, it really feels good just to come from adversity where somebody like where a lot of the people watching from the watching from the stands like man this guy is pretty much over this guy is done and then you just you know just come back and defy the odds man yeah go ahead bro yeah so um you know one that's a super amazing experience i you know uh haven't been in a boxing fight myself but um hearing that you know I, I see it's a lot of endurance in there too and stuff and for a lot of our listeners out here who haven't actually maybe even done a conditioning for a, a fight like that what is your what does your every day kind of look like how do you get ready for something like this well for me i do a ton of running like the first thing i do when i wake up is I mean, depending on the day, some days it might be like three miles and I might just up the speed and I might just do some sprints. And then for the most part, it's like four to five miles, sometimes even six miles, depending on if I'm like, if I ate like a really big meal last night and I had to like lose a little bit more weight. But yeah, it's like four or five miles. And then also, uh, going to the gym later on that day uh a lot of bag work jump rope um shower boxing uh double in bag i mean for those who know who don't know what double in bag is it's like it's like a little small ball that like when you hit it, it it like bounces back so it helps you work on your um timing and um defense a little bit and also the slip bag as well that helps you work on just strictly defense. And you just slip, slip, throw a couple combinations. And beside, and but the worst of all, I have a uh, conditioning coach. Shout out to Coach John G. Man, he like pushes me in and out the gym, man. But anyways, I'll actually meet up with him outside the gym. And he takes me through hell, like hell on like earth. Sometimes I just be like, man, when the hell is this workout gonna end? And I never know what I'm gonna really do when I go train with this guy. Cause sometimes he will literally have me on a push sled, uh, push sled. Then might be on bow ropes. Sometimes he might just put on the, the body suit, and I have to just go. And just throw combinations for like ten minutes straight sometimes, or he might take us take uh cut. When I say us, I also have a partner uh who also boxes as well, and he also was with me at, at this tournament as well. But anyways, we will um do like these really big hills. Like these hills are like humongous. Sometimes, sometimes we will have ankle weights on. We will be chopping wood. Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, I know everything is just random, but that's how like random it is. I mean, I never really know what they expect. Sometimes he would take us out to the pool. We will be boss. We will be shower boxing in a uh, in um, water for resistance and what else? What else? But anyways, I, I I probably couldn't even like remember everything. Oh, yeah. Also, he also have us bike riding up steep hills as well, and that's like no joke. Yeah, man. But yeah, that's pretty much everything that I can pretty much name right off top. But yeah, but there's so many things that goes into just fighting, and also uh tons of sparring as well. I try to. I mean, if if I can, sometimes um. We would go, you know, out of town for sparring. I went to Detroit before and uh, try to spar before. And now I went to Chicago before and spar. But and also keep in mind when I say sparring, you know, when you when you when you spar like in your own gym, it's it's a it's a lot more controlled. It's because you know you actually like know this guy more, and you guys are trying to really work. Now when you go out of town, especially the Detroit, the, these guys are like treating it like it's like a damn fight. So these guys are literally trying to rip your goddamn head off, like from from your damn shoulders. And I'm mean, like, I mean, yeah, from your damn shoulders. And the, these guys do not really fuck around, man. These guys are throwing overhand rights with like 
left hooks, but they're like putting their whole damn body <laughs> into these <laughs> into these punches, man. You like this? Oh, okay. I remember like I remember one time I uh, sparked this one guy. This guy literally came out throwing like he was a damn softball, so he was throwing right hooks, straight left hands. I was like, and then like literally he bust my damn lip. My damn like go. Lift is like leaking. I was like this all like I was just like oh hell no that I literally decided to go on back and try to hit his ass too, but it was crazy. Like like these dudes like I'm not sure if so, it's just something in Detroit's air, but it's like these guys be like mad as hell for no fucking reason. So I was like, God damn, who who the hell fucking shit it in your damn oatmeal, motherfucker? <laughs> damn. But uh, I mean it's definitely fun, but man, I would definitely tell anybody if you go into Detroit, just make sure you're like mentally prepared that these guys is literally gonna try to like kill your ass. <laughs> and then, I remember I was like talking to a couple guys and Jeff was like, "Oh yeah, um, I wanna go to Detroit." And then me, you know, I'm a really like brutally honest person. I'm like, bro, you know, until you get your experience, up, I will not try to go. To Detroit, dude, because these cops is, is going to try to kill you, dude. <laughs> like, man. But, like, anyways, man, that's all I got to say about that, though. Yeah, man, that's that's crazy. That Like, that whole experience and whatnot. Um, but you know what? Like, I had... We're going to bounce back with this, but um, the reason why I wanted him to talk about his experience is because, ultimately, guys, he's doing what he loves to do. And, yeah... You know, it's boxing. It's like literally sometimes there's jokes made about boxers like, are you an idiot? Why are you putting your head on the line? And I think I read an article today. Uh, uh, What's his name? He's fighting today. The YouTuber guy. The Paw. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. yeah, which I'm not even going to get into the antics that shit. That's <laughs> bullshit. That he just, just he was born into this, this situation. It sucks. There's people that actually, you know, they fight their way to the top. This motherfucker just comes on here like, hey, I'm a famous YouTuber. I can do this. Like, fight, like, so like bum. I can't stand his ass. Like, I promise you. Like, if you ever hear us in the podcast, invite me to, to fight you. I'll be gladly to do that. Yes. I would love to. You know, and I seen like... Uh, Spence Cross. Yeah, fight. Yeah, bring, come on, fight Faiska. Come on. That way I could beat your ass real quick, and I could go ahead and uh, get yeah, put my family on because obviously you 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 know I ain't gonna get into it. I'm a YouTuber too. I know the hard work that it takes, but I, I ain't gonna get into all that shit. Anyways, Canelo had made a comment about that guy, and I respect that comment that Canelo made. But anyways, um, that they said uh, this that guy is experiencing uh, a science of CTE. I think it's either Jake or the other one. I think it's Jake. Oh, CTE. Yeah. Jake said that bullshit. I mean, I don't know how you can experience signs of uh. I don't know how you can experience signs of CTE. I mean, shit. I mean, I guess it's possible, but I mean, unless you're really um, doing like other contact sports such as like football or other things like that, I don't understand how you can experience signs of CTE for a guy who's probably been boxing for like once for like what, maybe two or three years. And I'm not, I'm not even sure how really dedicated he is, but let's say he's dedicated. I mean, shit. Dude, you gotta be getting your fucking head blasted in, uh, and yeah, explain what CTE is. Uh, what's it? Chronic traumatic. Um, what was it? One sec, guys, I'm looking up for you guys, cause yeah, there you go. Look that up. But uh, oh yeah, I got it. Go ahead. So it's chronic traumatic encelep in encelepathy, encelepathon, cause that's the brain. Encelepathy. That is a mouthful. Yeah, a so, anyways, yeah, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. We're going to say CTE, guys. <laughs> but, anyways, it's just trauma to the the brain. You know, the encephalon is the brain. So, it's trauma to that. And that's what I was wondering because he made that comment. I'm just like, yo, you've been boxing, like, what, three, four years? You been, you experienced it that fast? That's like, what he's saying, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. So, it's just like, are you taking, like, you must be taking some fucking blows. Uh, I think the biggest thing about boxing is, you rather take a big blow from a guy and be knocked out. That's why it's better to get knocked out than it is to actually take punishment. Because as as even like as a fighter myself, 
Not to the extent of my brother, because I'm 30 now, man. I got kids and shit. Well, I got a kid. Anyways, when you when you when you take that big shot, you're done, right? You just turn on lights out. When you take punishment, that's where it's dangerous at. That's where football is dangerous because those linemen are taking punishment. It's not the reason you get knocked on your feet and you just get knocked out. Yeah, it's still bad. Don't get me wrong. But it's the punishment that you just keep withstanding. And your brain has the capacity. You're just rattling around. And it can heal itself. It, the brain will heal itself, you know. But you have to give it time. And a lot of times uh, fighters, you know, they when you love something so much, you're like, I want to go back in there. I want to go back in there. Knowing damn well, you probably shouldn't go back in there, but it's fight or flight, and you're going to fight because you have that warrior mentality. And so you're putting yourself at risk at that point. So that's why, that's where it's really dangerous. It's knowing when to when to turn it off. That's why I have my brother like, turn off, stop. There's times where I have to even save him from himself when it came to sparring because that's enough for today. Uh, I highly recommend if you guys want to get into boxing, don't spy, spar bigger guys. Start off small. Don't don't try to rush it because this is your brain. Boxing is only a small portion of your life. Whether you do whatever you love to do, it's only a small portion of your life. You have life outside of that. Whether you have kids, you have a family, you're a son, daughter, whatever. Like you have family that love you and they want the best for you and don't want to see you in those situations. I certainly don't want to see my brother all beat up and stuff. Unless I'm whooping his ass. And if I'm not whooping his ass, I don't want nobody else whooping his ass. You know what I mean? Granted, I never seen him get his ass whooped in an actual fight. Um, but um not saying we're not getting to the whole record, but I'm gonna just say this. I'm gonna be brutal now. My brother's really good. He still can't beat me, but he's really good. All right, but there's his L's he took when the fight was really close. But anyways, guys, um, I just really wanted to have that experience delivered to you guys because ultimately it's going to tie back to what you love to do, what you are willing to do. This guy is willing to put his health on the line for the sake of himself. He for He's forging his own path because he's like, I love this sport. This is what I love to do. And by any means, I would never marginalize someone's uh, passion because that's what they love to do and I know Tyler speaks a lot about that you know turn your talent to income that's what my brother is literally doing he's doing the same thing he's just doing it he's forging his own path so like I wanted us to talk about like how we're like forging our own path in a way and creating um manifesting what we've like already been thinking about like like how does it how can we tie that in to all of this stuff my brother is talking about? I'll give it to uh, Tyler first and just pass it down. All right. <clears throat> hey, thanks for the mic. Um, and, yeah, uh, one thing that I'm going to really hit on here is, uh, as you said, he's crafting his own path. Um, and I, I wrapped it up in, like, four words. I say make yourself a priority, <laughs> right? And so that's, like, really what he's doing. He, he knows what he wants, and he's out here. He's putting the time in outside and inside, you know, the gym and everything to make sure this is happening. And each of us, we're also doing that. You know, we know exactly what we want. We have a goal for ourselves, a vision for what that is. We can break down what that vision is going to require of us to do. So that's our plan. That's the steps that we have to take. And we're willing to put in the time and effort that it takes to get that. So we're just relentlessly doing that. And if we have to, we'll revise our plan when things happen. Like COVID happened. We didn't expect that. But did any of us quit? No. We're all still going. We're all doing exactly what we're doing. And actually, we've all elevated so that's what's crazy about it. And so, you know, when you decide exactly what it is you want, it doesn't matter what's happening in the world. There is simply steps that you have to take to get to that goal. And that's that's all it is. You just keep going for it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can definitely relate to that story, man. I haven't quite gone through the same exact experience as you, but I can definitely uh, see that it's very interesting, man. You, you're putting yourself out there, putting yourself out on a limb. Um, but ultimately chase those dreams, uh, and, and, and attain that goal, you know, um, <clears throat> it's really interesting, man. You go through a lot, uh, the fighting, I could just imagine, I could feel the energy as you're like, yeah, going into the ding, ding, ding. And then you're about to get in there and the crowd's watching you. It, it sounds crazy, man. Um, but, uh, definitely, I know you probably getting that feeling like those butterflies Ooh. and, um, I, I kind of relate like to football. I remember going out. On the field, you got the whole crowd watching, you know, cheerleaders, whoever it is, other team, parents, and, you know, everybody's watching. It's just like, man, you get the kind of nervous feeling, those that energy, you know, you get used to it after a while. And then it's just like it's supposed to feel like that's a good feeling, you know, when you're going after something, uh, whether it's, you know, sales or 
uh, just trying to better yourself, create a business, you know, you're fighting for something, you're putting yourself out there and you're getting those same butterflies. Maybe you're about to go do a motivational speech or maybe you're about to start a podcast, um, whatever it is. Um, I try to put myself in that situation as well so that I can get that little bit of energy going and that kind of nervousness. Cause when you're doing something like that, that's how, you know, uh, you're supposed to be doing that because, uh, it's exciting, you know? Um, so yeah, that's really huge, man. I can also relate to that. The, uh, the journey of the fighter, man, and the fighter story, you know, uh, I feel like we're all fighting. We're all fighting something, you know, we're all fighting to carve a better path for ourselves, a career path or, uh, just chasing after those dreams, whatever it is, you know, we're all fighting, waking up, maybe some of us uh, are not in the greatest health or whatever it is, you know, you're fighting to get your health back, fighting for your health, your relationships, for your wealth, so uh, I definitely can relate to that, I know as an entrepreneur, uh, you have to get up and you have to fight every day, you know, uh, different adversaries are going to pop out, uh, different circumstances, but you're going to have to figure out a way to go under it, around it, or over it, um, and you know, uh play defense and play offense or however it is that you have to play it so I definitely can uh relate to that uh to that fighting journey man and just to keep fighting so I hope you guys enjoyed his experience um and allows you to give you some insight and some courage to get into the get into the ring and spar with that opponent you know uh in whatever field that it is that you're in um I just want to ask you real quick you said you were backing him down in that yeah, in that last fight, does that mean that you're kind of uh, coming after him more, or are you playing yeah, defense? No, okay, I, so you're coming I, after I, him, chasing him down, making him, getting him to back up. Yeah, let's, let's talk. Let's see. Yeah, I was actually walking him down, and honestly, for me, that's not really like something that I I do naturally. Because to me, I I'm I'm more of a counter puncher, so I personally like people to come to me, but at that moment, I was like, "Okay, showtime, so bitch." I'd be like, "I'd be like, I'd be like, okay, since he wanna do play, play, you know, play games like that and knock him down." I said, "Okay, bitch," you know, because some some people actually get scared when they get knocked down or like hurt or blood, like with blood. To me, that actually like fused me. I'd be like, "Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, mother." <laughs> Fuck it, I'm a fucking, I'm about to like fucking just kill your ass now, kill your ass. <laughs> cause like, cause to me, I take it like you just humiliate me in front of all these good people. And he said good people though. All these damn good people, and then and then keep in mind that's not even including people that's watch it on the on the damn stream. And then I also know that my uh, older brother's watching. I was just my damn older brother. I actually look for his uh, uh, approval still, even though I'm 22 and he's 30. I don't even like give a damn shit. I'd be like, oh, okay, my damn older brother watching me, so I know I have to definitely put on for him. So I was like, okay, I'm about to just go in there and go, go, go ahead and go get this motherfucker for that shit. <laughs> so yeah, when he when I saw him get dropped, uh, um, it definitely, I I didn't even like freak out, just like. Yeah, that's what happens. I told him how many times to not to drop his right hand. No, he does. no, no. It's the left hand. It's I his left hand. The right hand. Yeah, yeah. He, it was, drop the left hand. he would drop his left hand when he throw the right hand to the body. And I've been telling him this for years. I said, bro, somebody's gonna catch you one day because uh, there was one guy I had saw him when he had went to the Chicago show, and I, he just he didn't. I didn't understand. Like for me as a fighter, when I'm in that ring, when I aspire people, I'm very. Uh, I read people. And so I can tell like what works. And so I'm surprised that guy didn't do that against you. But when I see him, my brother get dropped. I was I knew he was good because I'm like, it just it was in fighters terminology is that was one of those uh, flash knockdown. the flash knockdowns where it doesn't hurt you, but it's just like oh shit. Because I've been in a tournament where I got knocked down before, and it's like oh shit, like he really knocked your shit just blacks out and you just you lose control and then you wake up and you're like I'm on the fucking ground. Let me get my ass. I'm about to beat his ass now because that's some bullshit. So I understand that aspect because it, it pisses you off. But, like, he dropped his hand. I'm like, I told that nigga, do not drop your hand. When he called me, I was like, you see what I'm saying, bro? I knew that shit was going to come. You're going to get a fighter that's going to understand. He's going to catch you. And then, boom, I've been telling you for how long. I've been telling this guy for years. I told my brother this for years. I said, don't drop your left hand, bro, when you throw that right hand. It's lazy. Keep that hand up so you, get, you can guard yourself. 
and it happened. And so I wasn't tripping. I was just like, okay. I mean, he got him. It wasn't a shot that I knew hurt him. It was just flashed him. So you know the shots that hurt people. You're like, oh, that hurt him. Um, but when you're just flashed, you're just like, okay, it, it got him. It, it woke him up. So now they're going to see how he respond because usually when someone gets a flash knocked down, they're like, I'm about to go after his ass. When you might have flashed him, but you didn't hurt him. So you got to be careful because sometimes I see instances where people actually get a flash knocked down and then they get their ass whooped. And it's just like they think they won. It's like, nah, that was a flash. You got to understand the differences. But that just comes with more experience. But, yeah, certainly I wasn't tripping. I knew he would come back. And after that, he just started, you just start whooping that nigga's ass. Like, you, he whooped his ass. I was like, I thought for a minute he's going to knock him down or knock him out. But uh, he came after. I know the first guy, you had dropped his ass. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, that was the first fight. But, anyways, yeah, the second one, like I said, he overcame that adversity. Now we'll get into the third fight because I that's a fucking robbery. And like I said, I'm going to be honest with with or without. If I say my brother got his ass, my ending got his ass whooped. No, he, he won that fight. But the thing about it, if I would have won that fight, I would have been ranked. Fuck. I, I literally would have been ranked on the USA Boston rankings because the guy ended up getting ranked that, you know, so-called beat me. It was a split decision. So that's like three judges thought he won, two judges thought – Thought I had one, and um, and literally he fought again. You, know I mean, I'm not, you know, I respect all my opponents, win, lose, whatever. I mean, unfortunately, in amateur ball, I mean, in amateur boxing, there's no draws. But um, yeah. Anyways, he ended up fighting another guy. The next fight, I literally thought he lost that fight too. And, and the guy from California <laughs> was fucking just as damn like shocked as. I was when I had lost. <laughs> so, and yeah, and that's the thing. When he had called me, I was like, no, no, no. When I was watching my mom, I was watching it on a, on the a big screen. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, Jay won that fight easily. Like, I thought that was his best, like, actual uh, fight that, through the whole tournament. Like, I was like, I said, that was his best one. I was like, that was a good one. And I'm like, okay, he won. I walked away out of the chair. And they said out of the red corner, right? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? So then he calls me literally not five minutes later. And he's like, bro, I, 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 it was a close fight. I'm like, that wasn't a close fight, bro. You whooped that guy. And uh, my brother was like, I'm going to call you back. And I'm like, I'm thinking, like, okay, he's going he gonna to call me back because they made a mistake. So they're probably going to like reverse the, the dub, whatever, for that guy. Give it to my brother because I was like, it was obvious. Nope. I was like, whoa, you actually lost. So that fight, I sent it to people who ever want to see it. And so... You can anyone can see for themselves, like, wow, that's crazy. So it was definitely a robber. I felt bad because, you know, he really wanted it and I could tell. And I know what it's like to go through something, you put your heart and soul in something, you get robbed. You feel like you got robbed, you know. And it, that's the thing about that's why I tell my brother, you sometimes you can't leave it in the hands of your judge. You either gotta whoop that motherfucker's ass or you have to knock their ass out. Like flat out. You can't be in there and just be like, Oh, I'm gonna go in and get beat him up and judge like, no, kill that motherfucker. It's like for real from Aaron Yeager shit. It's killer be killed in there, and so you actually have to have that mindset. And so he took his L. Uh, shout out to the guy that won. You definitely you didn't win that against my brother, but that's just I'm gonna say that. But anyways, yeah, um, that whole experience is just crazy. It's crazy. Um, and and I hope you listeners were able to take some from it. I, and I know I took some away from it because it's just like. I, I live in this world. I see it. I live with the guy, so I understand like the world um, that he's experiencing. But I certainly don't understand understand his walk of life because I'm not in his walk of life. I'm just alongside him. But anyways, um, I think that was a good a good talk. What you guys think? I think so. That was a good one. That was a solid one. Yeah, so. man. And, Anything uh, else you want to say real quick before we go ahead and close out? Uh, the only thing I'll probably say is that, oh yeah. I know what he was saying earlier is that, you know, when us fighters, we, you know, put our bodies at harm all the time. But that's because, man, we have so much passion for for this sport. And also, man, dude, I go into a headspace sometimes, especially if it's a fight that it's a lot riding on it. I literally go in. I mean, I know a lot of people probably don't, you know, agree with this. And I know I can't say, you know, what – what my brother feels about this, maybe we can get his opinion right after I get done saying this, that I literally be like, man, if I literally, like, 
if I literally had to like die in this ring today, I would be cool with that just so I can win this damn fight. It, it, it just like, I never thought when, when I first got into the sport, I never thought that I would actually think and say things like that. But just like, the more you invest into something, the more you're like willing to just make like the ultimate the ultimate sacrifice for it. And I just feel like with that is but I put so many it's like so much time, so many hours into this that I will be willing to put my life on the line just to win a damn fight. A lot of people are like, man, why not fight you know, why not, you know, live and fight a Another day, to me, I, I see every fight as a stepping stone to get to that ultimate goal that uh, where I actually want to be in this sport. So I will be willing to, you know, die in there. I don't care if I have to be have a concussion or anything. I will be willing to do anything. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and close out shortly, but I definitely want to just say that uh, I think that's. With anyone that that loves something, uh, I said it before too. Doing the stuff that I do, that I'm gonna leave everything out right here. I don't care what I put my body through, and I think with everyone that's invested in something, they love something so much. Whether that's your, your mom, your dad, your kid, your grandma, whoever. When you love something so much or a person, you're willing to do everything. You're willing to sacrifice yourself for the sake of that person or that dream. Um. So, I agree with that. Do I do I agree with the point that you should do it? No. But when adrenaline kicks in, I know what decision you're going to make, and I have to honor that. I don't agree with it, but I, I, I do understand that. I will honor that because I know I will do the same thing uh, for what I love to do. But anyways, guys, um, I hope you guys were able to take something from it. I hope your cups were filled. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. We occupied a lot of your time. This is probably the longest podcast I think we had. So we had a lot to say. But I definitely want to have my brother on there. And certainly I'm going to have him on in future podcasts. As well as uh, our previous guest from before, my cousin. Shout out to M. Shaf. M. Shaf. Marcus Schaefer. But anyways, fellas, anything else you guys want to add? Keep fighting. Keep fighting, y'all. Okay, for sure. Yeah. As we were talking, you know, heavily about passion and everything out there, um, our listeners, you know, you might not know what your passion is, what you're willing to put everything, you know, on the line for. And that's perfectly fine. But the thing is, you have to at least get started trying some things, right? And everything that you currently like is because someone introduced it to you in some kind of way, you started it or whatever. And so you're going to find your passion through trying new things and exploring what it is that uh, that's unknown to you currently or even what you already know and diving deeper. So Again, you have free time in the day. You have 24 hours in a day. Uh, find some time, an hour. Just try something new and uh, make yourself a priority. No doubt. Totally agree with that. Well, look, guys. Will, did you want to add anything, bro? For sure. All right, man. So uh, I was talking to my cousin about this earlier, man. Uh, Bruce Lee, once again, one of his famous quotes was, I think it was like, the ultimate warrior is just the average man with laser-like focus. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when I see Jay and he's out here and he's fighting, he's chasing his dreams, he's waking up at God knows what time to go out there and do his six-mile runs. Later, he's going to do some sparring. Later, he's going to go with Coach John G. And he's just hearting in. He's dropping the weight. He's focused on chasing that one dream and that one thing, you know. Um, I just feel like that's the the best use of your potential, you know, because if you're out there, say you have like your laser pointer, you know, and you're pointing at all this stuff, there's these obligations and there's this, this other focus and this other thing that you want to, new shiny thing that pops up, you know, your laser is going to be spread too thin to do any damage. But if you just charge that beam and point it at that one single thing, um, or even in things that are in the same area, you know, it's going to be a lot more powerful. Um, so yeah, I, I, I can just say to, to stay focused, man, focus on your dream and, and be willing to die if you have to, to chase down your dreams, man, and make the ultimate sacrifice where that's the partying, that's the drinking, the smoking, the, uh, the trash friends or just people who don't see your vision for you, stay away from them, walk away if you have to walk away. Um, so yeah, it's just to stay focused, man. So you can be that ultimate warrior. 
also let me um actually add something is the way that I actually view my dream, my life, and I feel like a lot of other people should. I'm not gonna say actually. Let me actually um take a couple steps back on that. I don't think that people should do this, but this is the way that I choose to do it. I believe in quality of life over quantity. If I live to 40 or 50 years old, I'm fine with that. As long as I get to accomplish everything that I want to do in in this actual life, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I want to actually accomplish something that people in my family or people around me couldn't do. I always think that try to do what people couldn't do. And, and, and if... I know Boston isn't good for me, but if I die at, at 45 or 50, I am totally fine with that. As, as long as I got to just, just to do and do what my heart set out to actually do, I'll be fine with that. I mean, I feel like w- what's the point of living a very long time that's a very long life that's like empty, that didn't have no meaning behind it? I mean, someone that, that just does something that they hate doing. I mean, if you have a job that you love doing now, now, like that's always great. But if you have a job that you hate doing, and you're doing it for the rest of your life, I mean, what kind of quality of life is that? I mean, that's why I believe that everyone, um, everyone, even that guy that's working at a shitty job, you can find a way out. You can't like just like figure out what is your purpose. Figure out a way to like get someone to pay, pay you for it, and you can just do that, and whatever, and just do whatever it takes to make that dream real. And I'll just take you know pass over to. Man, I I felt that you can get out. Man, I felt that, bro. Um, yeah, and what Will was saying too, just having that focus. It's like uh, what's his name, Robert Herjafek from uh. Shark Tank, he said something. I was watching an episode a couple days ago. He said, you know what the biggest, the strongest characteristic of someone who to be successful? Of anybody. Laser-like focus, man. That's all it takes. It's the universal formula. When you focus on something and you think, you shit it, you breathe it, it's going to come. It might come tomorrow. might come a day later. It might come next year, 10 years. No one is really overnight success. They've been working. They just happened. Someone came across that, and that's where you see the overnight success. But they was working their ass off. You just didn't see it, cause it's what they come, it's what they do in the dark. That's what comes to the light. With that, fellas, we're gonna go ahead and close out this podcast, man. We've been on this month for a minute. Y'all like, man, we got some jewels. I'm ready to go home. I ever do this shit. Blah blah blah. Whatever, man. Look, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. It's your boy Spence Crosby, aka Faiska. I'm going to go ahead and let the fellas sign out. Y'all already know the deal. I'm going to say Ashe because I'm out. Ashe. Y'all close out for me. All right. It's your boy, Professor Ill Will, closing out, man. You can't change the waves, but you can learn to surf. So cern- learn, to, learn to surf, y'all. Learn to surf. New Wave Coaching, I'm out. And Tyler Wellness here with the Talents Income Academy. And as we mentioned here, you can turn your passions, your talents, and skills into income. And if you're looking to do that join the talent income academy tyler signing out a shade it's your boy it's your boy jay pierce justin pierce out here over putting holes in these fucking niggas heads each day <laughs> taking 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 motherfuckers heads to the hospital each day make sure uh a fucking like dent is in their head each dent. Close my damn podcast now. They say like a damn dent a day. Keep the doctors <laughs> in fucking business. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, y'all. We out. We having a good time. Peace. <laughs> this nigga. <laughs>